I would take witnesses with me. If I was going to do the man in the betting office, I'd take four witnesses with me, you and your wife and you and your wife. I'd do the thing, and when I left, by the time the police turned up and took witnesses, there was none apart from my four. I've done five and a half years in prison for things that I was eventually found not guilty for. If I was to individually meet the people, I'd, I would be very sorry, yeah. You flash little b****. And I'm going to bite an hole in your chest and suck the f***ing life out of you. And I myself. If one one nose was in his mouth and he was just going, I had to put it out. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today I've got David Courtney. Some know him as the monarch of the underworld. Welcome to the show. Guys, before we jump into this video, I want you to scroll down right now. Hit that subscribe button. Over 90% of you haven't subscribed. Scroll down, hit the subscribe button and make sure while you're at it, you hit the like button too. I'll see you soon. Hello, my friend. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's this, cool. It's been a long time coming. I've tried getting you on here for a while now. Yeah. You've, From when I first started, a friend of mine recommended getting you on here and said that you've got a story that will blow me away when I listen to it. So look, it's, it's not one story. It's a million little stories all joined up to one big one. You know, the, the public have a, a persona of myself, which I helped actually make you know what I mean as a younger man I've prostituted the press and got, what did it, you know I would have got at the opening of a bag of crisps <laughs> you know just to, but um this podcast this podcast thing and the uh the way television works now with live tv I think people have now come to yeah. learn who and what I'm about yeah I've so got the, some stories for you everyone's heard about you you and what you've done as a younger man now yeah. but let's throw it all the way back to your childhood Okay. Let's hear about your upbringing, family, what it was like, where you're from, and what turned you into what you're known for, being one of the notorious well, gangsters. I think, um, not running along with the norm, I come from a very normal uh, family. My mum and dad were God-fearing cub and scout leaders. There was uh, arcaders over in South London, in Peckham and Forest Hill. Yeah. I was an average kid, I wasn't the naughtiest kid in the world, but what I did have was, I liked to laugh, yeah? I'm, yeah. I, I like, funny, funny and making me and mine under my umbrella, having a giggle was, seemed to be the most important thing to me. I don't actually think there is any one thing that me or anyone else can ever say truthfully and say, that turned me into crime. I personally believe you're born naughty, Mm -hmm. It's just in you, running around in your jeans, and if the opportunity arises, boom, I'm that way. If it didn't arise, you wouldn't have become a, a better yeah. But Yeah, I just think it's in your thing. You know, I'm afraid you have it, sir. What was school like for you? Was uh, you a troublemaker? Me, was, no, no, I wasn't a troublemaker. No, it was a captive audience for me to actually perform. So you weren't uh, naughty, you weren't... No, I well, no, I, I, I lied to me. Well, they would, might say I was naughty. <laughs> I suppose they would consider it naughty. I was hunting the laugh or the giggle or the... You know what I mean? I was, I was out. Uh, I, th I think the only one thing you can put down to, to professional naughty men, they always had older friends when they yeah. were children. You might be able to pick from that, you know, but I always had a lot older and bigger friends than me that I never had to fight anybody, you know what I mean? I, I was too busy making them laugh and they were sticking up for me. Yeah. But what I was earning a lot of money was breaking in and out of things and um, making cut oh, all the average, nothing special than anyone else. And um, you, you can't just say nothing special. You've got to tell us what you were doing because your nothing special to some people is something special to some. Yeah, but me, so what, me what? the truth is this, I am nothing special, mate. That word, my, my most hated word is celebrity gangster. What the? He's a celebrity <laughs> gangster. Yeah, the two, two different things, the two words don't go. Yeah. It's like saying police intelligence. The yeah. two words don't, celebrity gangster, what's that? You know, I, I, someone wrote a book about me, and I'd I, I done a documentary about me many years ago called The Bermondsey Boy. I lived in Peckham. Why they called it The Bermondsey Boy, I don't know. And it was about a man preparing to go to prison. And they had permission from the Home Office to film me inside, film all my friends and all that when I was running dormant at the time, and filmed if they stayed law and if it changed me when I came out and whether my wife was doing it. And it was all that. Mm -hmm. And then um, they had permission for all that. And then on the day, Something happened that all the witnesses turned up and they said, it wasn't Deb Courtney, it wasn't Deb Courtney, it wasn't Deb Courtney. <laughs> so I got not guilty. So they just made up a documentary. They filmed me doing all the naughty things first. Yeah, yeah. Debt collecting, Dory, uh, car repossession, rent a clump. And then they was going to film me when I come out, Dorman, 
and that and yeah. see if it works. But I got not guilty. So they had to make a documentary out of just these naughty bits. Called it the Bermondsey Boy, and all of a sudden Dave Courtney's famous. Yeah. But what age did you turn into crime? What age did you become? Uh, don't forget, crime is is on, on, on who perceives it to be that. Yeah, I well, turned what into age having you, a laugh. What age did you get what, nicked first? Let's put it um, that way. I should imagine I was 12, 13 for silly things, nicking wheels off of uh, off cars, breaking into places. You know, I was earning good money at 14. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it was very hard to... Especially back then, money's different, yeah, of course, money's different afraid, to now. As much as it, as cocky as it may sound, there is such thing as natural leader material yeah. and natural soldiers. And I'm lucky enough to have had the natural leader material, not because I'm the best fighter, best shot, richest, clever. I can sort things out with my tongue without that. Yeah. And that's the one that's got to be in charge. You know what I mean? That is your last resort. Is handy to know that you've got muscle around you or someone with a... Yeah. Uh, yeah, a, a strap or something, if you need it, if you're in that world. Yeah. But personally, you've got to try first to mend it with your tongue, and I could do that, keep it all funny. And I think that's what made it be, blew me into the importance thing, yeah? The, the triads might not be having it with the yard, you might have got North London, South London, Indian, Pakistani, Protestant, Catholic, and all that, but they all got on with Dave. Yeah. And that it propelled me into a... Uh, I'm not saying I'm white and I'm white, but it propelled me into a certain fame. And then yeah. when Ronnie Cray died and I was asked to do the security, which I took on board as the biggest honour of my fucking life, you get what I mean? So I had a security company at the time. I thought that that day was going to change it for me for the better. The whole world is going to see what I've got. I picked 150 of what I thought was the best army anyone could ever pick. I had Mr. Glasgow, Mr. Manchester, Mr. Newcastle, Mr. Leeds, Mr. You know, I had a army mm -hmm. um, and three, three quarters of a million people turned up. They weren't all getting on. They weren't all great mates. You know yeah, I mean? Yeah. This little firm didn't like that little firm, that little firm. Everyone against did. each other. Yeah, but on that day, I had to keep the... The peace. The peace, yeah. And then it was the first day that the police saw who I had working for me and each individual security guard had his own criminal CV and he went that is organised crime Yeah, that is one criminal organising every other cr criminal in England to come down in one army to and it's a serious to army, celebrate the life of another criminal like what the is that all about yeah and um, how old was you when he passed I was 40 so by this time you'd already been deep dived into the I was very much deep into into um, the, the criminal world. I'd been in and out of prison when I was twenty one. I got done for attempted murder. Uh, I, I've done I've done five and a half years in prison for things that I was eventually found not guilty for. Wow. I'd done a year on remand for a five million pound worth of cocaine thing and got not guilty. That's where I was in the special unit. What's going on, guys? If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you scroll down. We're now live on Spotify, so you can watch us while you're driving, listen to us, listen to us while you're in the gym. Pretty much just listen to us anywhere. And make sure you give us a five-star review on Spotify. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll dive into that in a little bit, don't yeah. worry. I, I've got plenty of questions for that part of part of your life. Yeah, there, was, there, was, there was 19 charges that you got not guilty for, no? No, there's a lot more now. There's, there's 22. But you let must, me tell you, you why. You must have a I've good legal guilty. team behind well, you. <laughs> I have, I have. But I've also got. It, the reality is this the very first bit in the Archibald, the rule book of law, is if there is a sh any possibility whatsoever that he may be not guilty, you have to find him not guilty. If yeah. there's an element of doubt, they cannot be found guilty of putting an innocent man in. You know, they'd rather let a guilty yeah. man out than put an man in. And when I was doing mine, crime, I would take witnesses with me. If I was going to do the man in the betting office, I'd take four witnesses with me, you and your wife and you and your wife. I'd do the thing, and when I left, by the time the police turned up and took witnesses, there was none apart from my four. Yeah. And they would go, big, tall, ginger, black man, left on horseback, that way. <laughs> yeah? You yeah. know, and... Um, if I was caught for something, I would have 20 good witnesses, soldiers and their wives, firemen and their wives, special constables and their wives, all turning up to say, just for instance, I was with Dave Courtney last night. And if you've yeah, got yeah. 20 people of good character character saying you was him, that is the element of doubt. So I could have enough witnesses to say anything, but I'll find 500 witnesses for you yeah, and say yeah. I was with me last night and swear on the Bible, right? 
But now you can't do that and get away with it because all your friends that would go court for you are on your Facebook. Yeah, you're fucked. And the judge looks at it and goes, we well, can't use him, he's your mate, you can't use him, he's your mate, you can't use him, he's your mate, you can't use... So you can't use any of your mates that would lie for you in court. Yeah. You now can't do it because what they do is... Scan everyone first. Yeah. Check so that's know. why you couldn't get away with... Um, with what I'd done, you know, when I was a genius, it's just I was very popular and had an awful lot of friends. <laughs> I was running most of the clubs in London and up and down the country at the time, security-wise, and I could pick out hundreds to go, I'll be a witness. And obviously during that time, you must have had problems as well. Of course You I must have had some. Yeah, it's not, it weren't all no. the good times, being the big yeah, boss. I've been you must shot, have... I've had to shoot people, I've had my son has been murdered, I've got lots of wow. friends doing life in prison, um, I've been to prison... You know, I've got bullet holes here. It has not been easy at all. It's quite happy. Right now, being Dave Courtney, I'm just floating along nicely, just enjoying it. Yeah. Leave me alone. I, I'm, like my book, Stop the Ride, I want to get off. That's what it's called. Yep. Right? But getting here was a little bit of a bucker. And when you're in charge of an awful lot of men and all them doormen, you get the blame and the credit for an awful lot of things that I can do you. Yeah, and I can imagine. Yeah, they wouldn't say... Bob, Steve, Charlie, Brandon, Seymour and Kevin stabbed and killed a doorman last night. Who They'd say, Dave's call this firm. Yeah. Yeah, and I was sitting at home. You know, so, so you do get... Uh, you, um, you get the blame for all of it, yeah, even, when, it's, even when it's nothing it, to do and, and I don't mind. I'm the one in charge. The buck stops here. I can take that anyway. And I've all these great big giants of men that you think, who or what could tell him what to do? Look at it. They need some kind of leadership. They need yep. some... Steering, they're a big powerhouse of an engine <laughs> of a man, but they need someone on the steering wheel. And I was the one, you know what I mean? And having a team of doormen that big, I suppose I had over a thousand people working for me at the weekend it's and about 500 team. people working for me during the week, Monday to Friday, on the doors. And then when the raving came in, I had 2,000 people coming because everyone had 28 doormen. What the wow! Um, must be making. Big dough back then. It was huge money. It was huge. Big I bought a castle, then. didn't I? I bought my, yeah. I bought a school, turned it in the castle. Me and my wife had white rolls. So, when school. you got nicked, didn't the police take that away from you or anything? It was a bit different then. You know, we're talking. They did take one of my rolls horses away from me. Yeah, and oh, they did. The house, yeah. Fuckers. But um, is what it is. Still, it got, is still got is. another it castle is. sitting yeah, there, so it's it not a problem. I mean, that, that's, that's really what it is today, and it? it's the. Um, money aspects around law that's all it is well that is that is what prison is about prison is about how much money they can take and from let me you. tell you this about prison you are not going to go into prison and meet any mastermind criminals and come out an awful lot more intelligent in the criminal world because you've met someone in there that's taught you something that is not how it that is not how it works because the only people you're going to meet in prison are people that are shit and got caught and don't know how to do it the only thing you can possibly learn from anyone in prison, and I've been there myself, is how not to do it. Yeah. All they can teach you is how not to do it. Can't, don't you tell me how to do it. You're in prison, you knob. You know, so teach me how not to do it. How did you get caught? How did you get caught? How did you get caught? And if you can remember the ways they all got caught and you still want to come out of prison and be a villain, then you're cleverer. Yeah. Because you've learned how not to do it. But there is no one in that building going to teach you how to do it. Yeah, no, that court. makes sense makes sense yeah. it does and make the sense the only people when you look at court cases that when they say not guilty and they go yes the only people to do that are people that done it yeah of course because if you didn't do it and you've done a year on remand you're going to be pissed you've been a year in prison and you've lost your job your mortgage on your house the payments on the car the kids out of private school you didn't do it when they actually go after a year not guilty You've still lost all that. No one's paid you a year wages. You don't go. Yes. You're still going. Yeah, no, 100%. I yeah, agree that with that. makes sense. So you've done five years, you said, Belmarsh. No, not five years. No, no. I've done, um, I done um, a year and a bit in Belmarsh on remand in the special unit. Oh, a year and a bit in the special yeah, unit. Yeah, and I've done, a, I've done about a year and a bit in normal wings on remand. I've done scrubs. So what did you go coffee. Belmarsh for? Because um, Belmarsh, we all know it as... It was just, just it was five million pound importation charge, and I was in the special unit, which is a prison. And you got not guilty for that. Built inside the prison, yeah, I got not guilty for that, yeah. All right, fair enough. Yeah, and the reason, <laughs> you know, I introduced somebody that. Um, what was the situation behind the situ that? The situation was uh, somebody in Bogota wanted to bring over five million quid's worth and didn't know anybody, 
and I introduced him to some fella. Yeah. And this fella done it. Okay. Well, I ended up then getting Nick saying that I was involved in it and knowingly concerned and without, and they had all the telephone um, Communication. evidence and they said, like, you know, without you introducing that man to that man, this whole crime would never have happened. So you're just as guilty as him, you know, I'm looking at a lump of bird. Without you introducing him to him, he couldn't have done it. Yeah. So it's down to me. Yes. And, and they've all gone guilty, so I'm now, I'm now going not guilty. And I've and I said to, to the judge, and I didn't think of this, I didn't plan it, it just, it just came out at the time. I was in trouble, mate. <laughs> uh, and, and, and the prosecution's looking at the jury saying, how can you, this gentleman, go not guilty? Without him, look at his phone, he rung him, he rung Bogota, Bogota rung him back, he rung him. Uh, when they landed, he rung Bogota. He was Bogotar. the link, he was the main yeah, hitman. Without him doing that, he said, um, without him introducing him to him, he said the crime couldn't have happened and I was, I was in trouble. And they said, what do you say, Mr. Courtney? And my thing, I said, well, Your Honour. I said, if I introduce you, sir, to that woman's customs officer over there and she gave you a dose, yeah. well, is that my fault? I introduced you, you put your cock in, you know what I mean? If he gives you AIDS uh, and you die... Am I done for murder? And you said this, one minute, one minute. You said yeah, this. Yeah, I said all that, all that, yeah. I said, if, if, if I introduce you to a bird and she gives you AIDS, can I get done for murder then? I, I introduce you, Your Honour. You put your cock in. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help. <laughs> no, we do, mate. Am I, am I uh, knowingly concerned to that or, or conspiracy? The judge weren't happy about that. No, well, the judge weren't happy, but I actually truly saw the jury all, to, all, all go to each other. I suppose he's right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he did introduce him, but who knows? You know, you can... Yeah, the I'm jury, fair if you're in the dock, the jury is like a game of tennis. You know, at tennis, you watch yeah, all yeah. the crowd go... Yeah. Well, as, you, as they're talking, if you're in the dock, you see all the heads going that way to him talking. And I saw them, that one comment, I saw them go, I said, I don't know what he's going to say. I did introduce them, but what they say and what they plan yeah, That's their problem. What doing me. And through that one, if she gave you AIDS, would yeah, I yeah. be a murderer? You know, I did, I it worked. I saw them actually go, I suppose he's right there. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you obviously went inside. Yeah. That's meant to be the worst prison in the UK, right? Well, it's, it's, none of them are when nice When you're in a people, really special unit. the newspapers, they're all hotels and they're all running around. <laughs> Please believe me, it is not nice. But that's not a nice prison. That's not the greatest one. There's, I suppose there's and worst it, older ones, yeah. But when you're walking down now and you're thinking, shit, what was what were they predicted to give you? What were they going to give you? I was looking at a 15. You're sitting there walking through thinking, fuck me. I'm looking at 15 years. Yeah, well, yeah. What was your life like then? It was awful. It was absolutely awful and the very first night I was in there going what am I doing here wow and it's just like I say it's a prison a little tiny prison for 40 people built inside Belmarsh prison Fuck and that. to come and visit them you've got to strip off naked go through the x-rays put on sterile clothes go talk through the glass with a screw sitting here and a screw sitting here you know all, all, all that caper did you have trouble in there I had no trouble no there's only 12 of us but no, no I'll that- tell a lie the only trouble I had was on the very first night I was in prison. Yeah. I'm just looking out the window going, wow, well, man, I'm on remand. I'm in trouble, yeah. But they put you in the special unit in on the remand? Special, on remand, yeah. It was all for, all for people on remand. Me. The people that I've definitely got something to escape for. They're looking at 50 years and all that. And I'm looking out the window and Charlie Bronson was in the cells underneath. Yeah, yeah. He was actually under the ground in the hole. And I didn't know at the time whether I would ever bump into him. I didn't know I was going to bump into him in the library, in the... Jim, yeah. and Jim. I didn't know that. Did well, you know I, he was in there? I knew he was in there, yeah. Well, I didn't know that he'd had the... I nicked a little bit of his thunder. Everyone in the prison was going, Courtney's been there, Courtney's in here, Courtney's in here. I nicked a bit of his thunder. And this is a really good impression. I'm in bed lying there and, and I heard at two o'clock, Courtney. I'm like, wow, man. 
don't know, just say anything <laughs> to him. I'm just locked in a cell. I went, Courtney, you flash little boop. Right. Yeah. Like, Are you my last swear on this? Yeah, say what you want. I, I won't say the word he said, but he went, you flash little bastard. He went, I'm going to bite an hole in your chest and suck the fucking life out of you. And I... Shit myself. There was a very <laughs> different South London G lying on the top of that bunk going, wow, and the whole prison come alight with everyone up at the windows going, Bronson Stuckey and Courtney Bronson Stuckey, and we're talking to each other, and I'm like, oh, my God. Uh, oh, what the fuck, fuck am I going to do here? Whoever that voice was going to eat me tomorrow. Right? Um, Did so you bump in into him out there? In my best South London gangster voice, I got up to the window and went, Charlie? <laughs> Charlie, whoa, stop it. <laughs> so I now I turned him instantly into a best friend. I now talk to him every single week. He brings me up every week. I've had two of his weddings in my pub. I've had all his wedding receptions. He's a good friend of mine, but there, the very first night was a scary night for me. I get treated very well in prison. Do you reckon that he's ever coming out? Uh, taking a piss a little bit. <sighs> right? I'll be truthful, he's a good friend of mine, and I don't want to go and stand him in and would upset him, but... Even if they're not thinking of not letting him out ever, because he is, you know, 30 years in solitary confinement would send anyone Yeah, yeah of course. Right? Now, their crime now isn't saying we're not letting him out, he's a nutter. Their crime is he weren't a fucking nutter when he went in, he weren't. They put him in solitary confinement for 30 years. That it's bit's a little true. bit. Yeah. yeah, he hasn't stood beside anyone and had a wee. He hasn't said good morning, good evening to anyone. He hasn't... You, you know, you get one when you ain't sat there with anyone and turned the telly off. You ain't queued yeah, up yeah. for anything, yeah? He's took him out of real life. Just him Locked by him himself. in on his own. He's not even used to sitting in a room with someone else watching telly because they've made it 30-odd years. So they can't sort of let him out. I but, don't think but, he but would But like... they should let him... And they just, it's a two, it's a two-bladed thing. One, they should let him at least go out on the normal prison population and talk and mingle and Slowly. be normal. But you know, give, give them their argument. If they did, there would be one million people in there that want to go up and jerk Charlie Bronson to go. Oh, I've done Charlie Bronson. Yeah, they couldn't even say the name Charlie Bronson. Right? Yeah. They wouldn't listen to some seventy-year-old used hard nut, and they'd be itching to. Do fight it. him so he either wins the fight and gets back in solitary or loses the fight and goes to hospital if they let him it's out on the belt. Yeah, I know, it's an awful, awful, awful one. It's so sad. So sad. But he's, listen, hopefully whatever he wants happens for him. Because yeah. he don't deserve what's going on either. He what's happened is a, it's a bit on. mad. No, Even when I, I was speaking to Ben, Ben was uh, in one of the prisons with him as well. And he said, it's just, it's a different ball game when you're in prison yeah, with him. you better believe it. It's a different you know, ball what game. What the press really. portray in every single thing, politics, war, prison, what the press portray really and truly is not even worth the truth. Yeah. <laughs> and prison's prison. You've got to do something yeah, to yeah, get in nice. there. Yeah, nice. It ain't supposed so to be. It's, yeah, so yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, not, nice. it's not a holiday. Yeah, it's supposed <laughs> to be nice, right. And you done... F- a year and a half in normal I've done three and a half years when I was 20, 21. Fuck me, young. Um, I got done for attempted murder for a knife fight in a Chinese restaurant in Forest Hill. Um, you got charged for that? You that got was charged you? for that, yeah. I went to the old Bailey and I got found guilty. You got found guilty for that? And I, I got three Did you run years, not guilty for that? Yeah. You run not guilty? Yeah. Have you ever run guilty? No. Never run guilty? No, I think I did once. I got <laughs> for some silly little thing that I was scared. But I've never gone not guilty. I always had, my phone book was already too full of very influential... Um, straight going people that would go caught and swear blind I was with them last night and that is element of doubt yeah. like that is that's what does it 25 people swearing on it you know yeah. and I'd bring my own witnesses to if I went into a pub to do something I'd have witnesses there going I saw it officer yeah yeah and if I ever did get caught the witnesses would go no that's not him because they're my witnesses it's a touch. bring my own witnesses with me it's a smart idea it's a <laughs> fucking smart idea you never think of it yeah let's bring my own witnesses with me yeah and when you went first time in prison yeah at 21 you 21. said yeah family mum dad were they like yeah well, I was, I was, I was, I was um, living with a lady at the time yeah yeah um, that's who it's, that's who prison hurts man you know, it's not nice to get 15 years as a bloke going, well, well, well. But if your bird is outside, yeah, she's the one doing 15 years. As well. 
with you. You don't have to find two, Bob. You're getting three meals a day. Uh, she has to stay honest with all of that going on, find the money. Do the, you know, they're the ones that get the bird. You get lots in a room, they no, not. And do with that. They're yeah. the ones that has to work and do the... And then every time we ring them up, we're having a go at them going, ain't you done that yet? Yeah. Ain't you done that? Ring him in. Oh, wow. And I see it and hear it all the time and was like it myself when I went in. The women, if you're a criminal and everyone has bad days at work, whether you're a window cleaner yeah. or a cab driver or a butcher, you will have a bad day, cut yourself, crash into a bus, knock a window out. If you're a criminal, a bad day means going to fucking prison. And the way to cut down bad days is keep her indoors happy. Because when you're having a row with her and you go, ah, ah, shut up, fuck off too, bang, you get in the car, you, uh, you're going past roads, you should go down, you're texting, you're back, you're like, ah, and you're all right. But when you're doing all that, you've still got to go to work, you've still yeah. got to go with all that going on. And so what, you have a crash, knock a window down the wall, don't think. But if you're a criminal, all that arguing with women makes you make mistakes. 100%, 100%. And then when you're in prison, the only two women that are still visiting you at the end is your mum and your wife. So... All the other women off. Focus on the main people. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the important ones. Right? My, my, my philosophy is I look after her indoors as long as that is smiling. Sometimes you can come out the front door and fight the old world and win. Sometimes. Yeah. I, they say yeah, happy sometimes. wife, happy life. As long as that bit's all right. Keep that bit all right and the rest is doable. You know what I mean? If you ever have a row and end up going to prison before you mended that row, you could be in prison for 20 years, but because you had that row that day before you got caught, it's made it 20 you do, years. you're doing, sorry, babe, sorry, you're a girl, don't they? <laughs> you know, it's a different, kind of, a different kind of bird, yeah? So keep them happy, you know, you, important, man. Before I come in here, I was Googling your name, and it popped up a story about when you got your nose, someone tried to bite your nose off. Yeah. How does someone nearly bite your nose off? Um, there, there was, a, there was, um, like, there's m many stories. I've interviewed loads of criminals, but your resume, when I'm just reading through it, is like, right now I'm just getting little parts of it all because you got, like you said, loads of little stories. You've got an hour and a half to fit and in it, 65 it, years worth. That's what of, I mean. And every single day, my friend, I promise you this. Maybe not so much now, but every single day of my life for a good 30 years was so exciting and so good storytelling <laughs> material that I never had enough time to tell you how funny it was yesterday because today was really good and funny. Yeah. And then tomorrow, I didn't have enough time to tell you about today because that was happening. You understand what I mean? I was, I, I was a very lucky man. I've had a couple of things in my life where I went, when he went to me, who would you like to be? Who would you really like to be? And I meant this answer. And at the time, no one. That is how fucking good it was for me at the time in London, right? I was thinking, who would I like to be? Who would get treated yeah, better yeah. than Dave Courtney right now in Leicester Square? Would Brad Pitt get his door open to string fellas quicker? <laughs> would he get the better bird? Would he get... No. So that one I remember. I yeah. wouldn't want to be anyone else. And I remember a gentleman made me a... A gentleman called Les. Les. I had a, a 5.8 convertible Jaguar XS. Um, and he... Painted it black and I had everything on it chrome, yeah. gold plated. Nice. So it was black with gold, you know. So you was the diamonds man. Diamonds in the eyes. And you I were... remember this looking out my window at Jenny's flat, at my car, and I thought, I actually own the prettiest car <laughs> I have ever seen. You actually, it was, it was awful if you was going out. You just sat in it and you couldn't help it. You come. Right? It's a fucking, <laughs> nuisance. <laughs> fucking nuisance. You didn't tell me the story about your nose. Tell me. The story about my nose is there was, there was, there was um, some contract disagreements in the security world between me and uh, this other young man. Big old fellow. I didn't know him, but uh, it got into... He was earning more money because the drugs were being sold in the clubs, so fighting for the contract, you know what I mean? He was either a doorman earning £100 a week or a doorman earning £100 a night or £1,000 a night. If you yeah, yeah. So we were fighting for it, and a lot of my doorman were fighting his doorman. So it ended up that me and him arranged it to go and sort it out between us. And when I gets down to this pub where it was supposed to be, I was just going to go and run in and a two-handed attack with knuckle dusters, and that was it. But there was people standing outside, and because everyone had come to watch me... Was hadn't gone into the pub till I got there. There's hundred people in the pub waiting in the garden, and I turned up and they said, "Right, we've got a searcher. He's out somewhere." I said, "You're searching me? No, nope, you're just honoured enough to watch. It's not a fair fight. It's a fight. I'm coming to." Yeah. And all my people I was with went, 
oh, don't use a duster, just don't forget it, Dave, just go in anyway. So I went out into a back garden of a pub with the geezer <sighs> twice the size of me, with knee pads on, bollock protectors on, going, ah, I'm smothering him baby oil, you know, like, the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, no, so we, we, we smoked, throwing punches at each other for half hour, he caught me on the shoulders, and we started walking forward, and I wear quarter irons on my shoes, like, the iron bits, like Blakey's, the old yeah, yeah. quarter iron. And he was just walking, and I was skating along, skidding along like Torville and Dean, and as I hit a curb, he f- I fell down, he fell down on top of me, and we're doing a bit of that banging our faces, and he looks up and went, sorry, Dave. And I thought, what's he doing? And he's holding my hands and went, Aah! on my nose. And because it was sideways, my mouth was filling up with blood, and I was like, I, I couldn't breathe. And it was like, there's no words being invented in the dictionary to tell you what that felt like, the pain. It's like, if you touch the fridge with an electric shock and you go, yeah. for a second, you go, yeah. ah. It was like that for 20 seconds on my Uta with Oof. an 18 stone skinhead hanging off the end of it. And the only way I could actually get him to get it off was while my nose was in his mouth and he was just going, Aah. I had to put it out like that. And as I pulled it out, all the stuff on that side, his teeth met when it got past the bone and all that come off and he went, I thought, fuck, that's my Uta. <laughs> my Uta and one big breath of fresh air in. Right, so the air went in like, like an ice cream brain. Like, as I was going all like that because of pain. I couldn't, and as hard as I could with one finger out, I went bang into his eyes. I popped out of the thing. I actually thought, I wonder if he can see behind him and do all that. What's going on, guys? This video is being brought to you by Morris Andrews Solicitors. As you're all aware, we've done a season two all about crime. If you watch that all and you're in any situation like that and need help getting out of the situation, reach out to Morris Andrews Solicitors and see if it's something they can help you with. Remember, there's a defence for every offence. That, I wonder that, if we can see behind That ended up on the front page of the sun, that puncher. <laughs> Do you know one thing I've learned about you, and I've only been speaking to you for half an hour, everything is just like funny and just jokes. And like you funny d- you is, just have fun with sure it. The first thing that I thought when it come out is, I wonder if he can go, oh, I'll have stage behind me. I did think that. But I ended, it ended up looking like that, which looks better. But at the time, driving to the hospital in an XR3 eye, we had red velour seats, this bloke. There was blood all over, he was panicking. I looked at it in the mirror and I would have willingly shot myself in the head because with all that missing, I couldn't believe it would grow nearly normal. You know what I mean? Looks sweet as. Well, I couldn't believe that. But looking at it in the mirror, I thought I'd rather die than live like that. It was just yeah. a big hole in my face. And I guess you and him went to war after or that was the end? No, no, no. No one's ever heard of him. I don't know him, Jim. Oh, fair enough. No one ever heard of him. Disappeared. Yeah. Makes sense. And moving on from that, that was at what age? That was twenty-seven, and you was on. You was the head of the head at the minute yeah, at that time. Yeah, yeah. What, what age did you take over and become the head? Um, I think that was a real slow progression because the company that I was with, luckily for me, my mentors were. Um, I was good friends with Joe Pohl, Freddie Foreman, Ronnie and Reggie Cray, Ronnie Biggs, Roy Shaw. Lenny McLean, Tony and Chris Lambriano, they were all really close friends of mine. So my learning part of my life, to be with, about the criminal thing, were from... The heads. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, you know, so, and I'm afraid it didn't do me an awful lot of good because nowadays all the things they taught you, an handshake, read a man by his eyes, honesty is the best policy, you know, I don't care, don't matter. Now, the more nasty and snidey and slippery and spiteful and bullying and sneak up behind you and jerk you up, that is how much more you get the respect. Yeah. And I'm afraid, um, by the time I started doing crime, England was still had bomb sites. We'd come out with army mentality, the crime world, and they run their little gang of criminals like the army. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it, and in the army, they do it fucking right. They understand the the importance of the pecking order, private, corporals. Yeah, yeah. Are, it's important. And now outside in the crime world, everyone wants to be in charge. It ain't going to work that way. With that as well, my dad says to me, he goes, I'm not scared of the gangster. I'm not scared of the old oh. man who's got a name. He goes, I'm scared of the 15-year-old who's been paid 500 yeah. quid to do a job. Right, and they can't even speak English. Nowadays, that's the problem. They're the dangerous ones, the little kids who... Listen, I know for a fact, a fact, two months ago, someone I know... Paid a, a fella at the bottom of his road that was washing his window screen, 
three grand to drive somewhere up the country with a photograph, shoot that person and come back and carry on washing a window screen. Three poxy grand. Yeah, These poxy. people at the end of your road washing wi- window screens, they dickheads, they've come from war-torn countries where life ain't really as important as it is in this continent. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. All, the, all these countries, that, and they're collecting pennies in a bucket, and killing people means nothing to them. It's nothing, they just want the money. Right. So if you asked him to go up there and for three grand, why well, do you run a criminal world when anyone can be bought to shoot you for uh, three fucking grand? Nowadays, a name is nothing. I mean, nothing. Back, they back can't in even the day. say Dave Courtney. The Cray twins run Bethnal Green when they run Bethnal Green when there was only 15,000 people in Bethnal Green. Yeah. Now, there's 250,000 people in Bethnal Green, and they couldn't even say the name Kratwit. Right? It's easy running that when everyone spoke and understood English. Yeah. And nowadays, they can't, like, even in the British Army. They have got to have three people. This is fact. I live in Woolwich by the Army Barracks. When I was shout out an order, they've yeah. got to do it in three different fucking languages because everyone in the Army... It's, it's from all over the gap. Yeah, yeah, he's... he's um, Wherever he's from and wherever yeah, he's yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he can't just go charge. He has to say it in Buc- Hindu, uh, yeah, yeah. Nepalese. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's mad. And half of them in there have got skirts on with moustaches. You're like, wow. And the fellow said to me the other day, when I'm supposed to be here on active, on active duty in, up in the Bosnian bits and all that. Yeah, he said, but I'm now back here, back in Woolwich, because I've got to go to court, because I shouted at a bloke for wearing eyelashes on parade. He went, fucking tell me, tell me that ain't going wrong with the British Army. I, I, don't, I don't fuck with all that stuff. Sad, I don't, I don't understand it? what's happened to the world. Sad, man. People are switching up this, that. I don't know, I think you look good in eyelashes. I no, quite no, like, no, you no, know, no. you got all that hair thing out, that that Mediterranean Don't, thing don't say like. all that shit now, <laughs> forget that. No, I, I, think, I think the world's gone a little bit mad, to be well, fair, yeah? Well, you know, I think it has. And I think it was a lot better back in your day when someone had respect because yeah. of who he was. Nowadays, no one gives a fuck. It doesn't matter who you are anymore. It's really mad because when you get as old as this, and I never had a plan B, I never planned on getting to be 65. I didn't do the pension, but I never planned on getting here. Everything I ever did was For tomorrow. life endingly short. You know, I drove stupid, I took drugs, I drank, I played with guns, I've been a cr- Everything I did, I didn't think I was going to be, what do I do now I'm 65? I didn't yeah, yeah. plan on that one, right? But every era goes, oh, it's better in your day, me. And I'd say to my mum and dad, oh, that must have been cool in your day. <laughs> and they would say, you know, so yeah. really and truly, it isn't ending up, it isn't heading towards, it isn't spiralling towards a beautiful world, is it? No, I think, I think nice. right now we're in a really bad place as well. Not nice. But I think we're going to ride the wave, we'll go for it, and we'll just see what happens now. Not nice. I've got yeah. a question for you, Dave. Yes, sir. Question. And think about it before you answer it. But do you regret anything you've ever done? I've woke up with some very ugly women. <laughs> and I regret some of them. Yeah. Um, do I regret everything? And I'm cool, of course. <laughs> I can't take you <laughs> serious. I swear. Got one no. Of the <laughs> London's biggest gangster sitting opposite me and just takes the absolute piss. I love it. I love it. That's how you know it's real. Um, it genuinely. I've made, made, you... made some wrong decisions with women. Because the decisions I made, and I was the man in charge, right? How do I say this about sounding like a Larry Flash Parson? Oh, go on, say it as it is. what I'm saying is, because I made decisions, I, I have to be right with the things I'm saying. Because if I'm wrong, the penalty is so high, I'll get another belly button I didn't want, or 25 years wrapped around me, yeah. or they all get 30 years because the bloke I introduced them to was... Yeah, yeah. Right, so I've got to be right with my things because the penalty for being wrong with something I decide to do is huge. So you get good at it. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, and 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 of course I've, I've got, but there's no, I've, I haven't had a 25 years. I haven't been lying in hospital with bullet holes in my head. I've got to work with one in my shin. You know, I haven't got that bad of a thing happen to me to to say, oh, I really regret it. I really I mean, of course I regret getting caught doing this and I regret getting caught by the missus doing that. Do you regret any of the bad shit you've done in your life? Or are you one of them people who live their life and I've done it, it is what it is? If I was to individually meet the people, I'd, I would be very sorry, yeah. But um, I was a debt collector, mate. Yeah, that, 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 and that was why it's very easy for me to put my Robin Hood hat on because 
Mr. A nicked half a million pound off Mr. B. Right? My job is to get the money back. The methods I used might be horrible and nasty and put me in prison and makes me an horrible person, but the actual root of the story is I'm getting the money back that he stole. How I did it is what puts me in prison, but he, at the end of the event, says I'm the best guy in the world, so I've got him back half a million. Doing and a job. he, who had, yeah, he would call me the devil, you know? So you've collected a lot of debt. I've collected an awful lot, yeah, millions. And you're good at it, clearly? I, I think so, yeah. And there must be some stories that you've got. There's hundreds of stories, isn't there? There's hundreds but of there stories. But there must be, there must be results. thrown garden furniture through French windows, run into the front room, the blokes fell off the back of the city. I'm halfway through whacking him, telling him about the money, and he goes, you want 37B? 37B? And I'm going... <laughs> What? One minute, one minute, you <laughs> run into the wrong man's <laughs> no. house. I, I'm All laughing, but it's not even a joke. Been people bonked on the head, wrapped up with masking tape, brought round to my house for me to tell them what. I ripped the masking tape off, wrong fucking geezer. Ah. And what are you doing that, Jamie? Well, I just put 50 quid in the, in the boot of the car, he's all wrapped up, and sent him back to where he was. I couldn't do nothing, could I? You know what I mean? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I swear you know, to God. It's not I'm even sorry. something I should be I've laughing I've gone round there before to go and knock on someone's door and give him a little smack, and he's sitting indoors watching the FA Cup with fucking nine of his, ten of his mates. And come out and give me an idea in the front car. There's been a million, a million different stories, you understand what I mean? A million. See, that, that is the issue as well, because you have so many you know, stories. I wouldn't know which one to stop and, and, and to, tell you. To you, it's all normal as well. That is what you was brought up doing. Like, well, you I'm was a, a debt yeah, collector. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was it. That's your job. It's like Life asking. is habitual. Yeah. Just like Charlie Bronson, he's now used to being in one room on his own. Yeah. And because that was happening every day. That was the norm. It was normal, yeah. It really, really was. You know, it really was. If you didn't know where to get something done, you knew that doorman, the most of you know. If you, know, if you wanted your car repossessed, squats yeah, yeah. thrown out, someone to give your daughter's boyfriend a clump around the ear off for bringing her home with a black eye. Yeah, if you did, the doorman knew it. So I had a, I had a job centre for naughty men, for big, giant, bald-headed, flat-nosed geezers. All week they were doing nothing apart from sitting in the gym. And on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was working in the club for me. So I was a job centre for all these muscly blokes. Yeah. So yeah you... which, which actually, in, in my eyes, that was what it was. In the authorities' eyes, after the after the Cratering's funeral and. Uh, the first showing of organised crime and Dave, no one man should have an army like this in the, in the country apart from the army, you know, that's not right. And um, it brought the attention of Dave Courtney to the general public because in, in the morning it was heir to the throne and all that so shit, was... celebrity getting on that. And it also brought me to the attention of the authorities that the very next day they went, knock him on the head. Every club I had when they went, Get rid of Courtney's doorman, or you won't have a telly for a, you won't have a license for a telly. Oh, Get rid of it. You don't go no more films, you see no more magazines, you don't go in the paper no more. Finish. Is that what they all done? That's what they done. Wow. So it all that propelled me into some kind of criminal um, uh, stardom. It actually finished me off as a criminal. Once everyone in England knew what I looked like, my job was running in someone's house and debt collecting. Now they can go, it was Dave Courtney, I know him, I seen him on the telly, I know who he is. I can't get out of my car and go bang. Yeah. Because the geezer will go, it was Dave Courtney, Dave I know who it is. Oh, it, it made me instantly redundant. So the day I got famous as a celebrity gangster was the day I was actually I had to so write a book and go, stop the ride, I want to get off, I've finished. Yeah. That's mad though. Yeah. When, you, when you really think of it, a lot of people think, oh yeah, let's... You're going to stop, like you're going to be the main man that fucked you up. Yeah, they brought out a new law. There's a new law, I think, came out three years ago, that in, involved in this law is you cannot glamorise crime. And in that little city law that they slip through, um, that means I can't be in any films, they have stopped me getting a pub, I can't go to America, I can't be on the radio, I can't be on... You know, journalists have been writing about me for 30... I know him, he's been writing about me yeah. for 30 years, I know him. He went, Dave, we're not allowed to write anything nice about you. By law. So they can't... I'm not allowed. And if it's got Dave Courtney in it, it has to be flagged to Scotland Yard first. And if it isn't detrimental to you, we're not allowed to mention your name. Virgin went, yes, we'll publish your books, but I'm not allowed to put a poster up going, Dave's got a new book out, because the poster is glamorising crime. Wow. Vinnie wow, Jones wow, can play wow. you in a film because he's a footballer, but you can't actually be in a film because you've been in real life. So 
we can't. Even can't though you have changed your life. Oh, listen completely and utterly. I am a, if they used me properly, I'm an advert for don't do it today, mate. Yeah. Don't think you're pitting your wits against a Sherlock Holmes policeman. You're trying to beat fucking technology. And you won't. You will go to prison. Everyone out there is a grass. Your phones are grass. Your cars are grass. The fucking doorbells are grass. The yeah, yeah, cameras on the... You know, when I was at Robin Things, fuck me, man, listen. Why everyone wasn't an arm robber, I don't know. Because before the CCTV camera, you'd get three old ladies sitting behind a, a, a bit of glass like that. No checkbooks, no cards, no, no cash. 200 grand, 190 grand, 300 grand and 140 grand. Cash. Big sign on the wall in the back of the bank saying, no have a go heroes, we're insured. So you went in and went, sweet. There's the money. There's no tills that went up, no machine guns, policemen never had radios, no helicopters, nothing. The only bad luck you could have is if you walked out of the bank with all this money, there was a copper standing on the, on the thing. And then he would chase you down the road with a fucking whistle. Please, please. You'd come out with all this money and he'd chase you down the road with a whistle and a little bit of wood. And you've just got 400 large cash. Sweet. Uh, yeah, well, so uh, you, can un- you didn't even have to save up. As soon as you run out, go bang it another. <laughs> you didn't even need to save <laughs> you up. You know what I mean? So pop back into the bank. Life is different. You are not supposed to be a criminal today. It's a different world. Yeah. They are building thousands of new prisons all over the place because to house people that have fell for that gangster dream. It's, it is a historical romantic word like pirates, cowboys... Knights in shining armour and gangsters. They are all famous naughty boy figures of the past, but ain't no more. You can't go to court and say, uh, the computer game was too violent, and the song was too violent, and the lyrics and the MC, and there's no greeny ever for me to play on, so I robbed the bank. Or I've, that made me mug the bloke in the chip. You know, you can't say that. No. It's in your genes. Yeah, it's in ev- your... Everyone gets caught now. That yeah. is the problem. Like you That's said, right. technology is too sharp. Like you said, yeah, you and I'm afraid the doorbell's a snitch. Speaking on, on their behalf, the youngsters, I can't afford the nice trainers. I've got no money whatsoever. My dad's only put on. I'm sitting here on a council estate. I can't go out there without a chip because that one... Or I could go out there, start shotting, and I can get these trainers, sit out there and make some mates and all that. But I ain't going out there now and all this shit, clothes, no money. I can't afford a bag of chips. No one's got nothing. Or shop. Yeah. There's a way out for them, so, well, I don't know what, yeah, I'm saying don't, but what, what, I can't what else say, can they do? Don't go into crime and then not give them a, an, alternative. an alternative. I can't do that. Yeah, yeah not in reality. It, it is, it's the truth, what you're saying, it is the truth. Oh, listen, they say to me now, well, what are we going to do about the youth of today, Dave? How are we going to mend this? If, I, if, you want, if you want me to give you a little, little what I believe has happened, yeah, go on. Right? I believe it went wrong in this country when they stopped giving kids the fucking cane right because telling me that they're gonna give me a detention if i do something wrong wouldn't stop me fucking wouldn't stop you i know i can look at it right? but <laughs> saying i'm gonna smack you across the arse with this lump of wood six times tonight if you misbehave that slows you down a bit yeah right and in school is your they get teachers see you more than your parents right and you've got no now no Discipline in school. Now you do the worst you can get is told off, and you're coming back here for an hour. And then some clever bastard, some really clever bastard, said, "Oh, and your mum and dad can't smack you." Really? Yeah, that's bullshit. Really? And when we send your kids to school, we're going to teach each every one of your kids to be a fucking grass. I'm going to yeah. teach him if if Tom. your mum smacks you, ring three three two nine nine five five one, and we'll put your mum in prison. How's that? So they're teaching you what has gone wrong because my mum used to smack me yes. and go, don't tell tales. I remember once. If my brother broke the thing and she said, who done that? And I went, it was him. I got it for don't tell tales. There, there was once I was in... They I, teach you it in school. I, I left school, your mum and dad up. Got in my mum's car and I had a really bad day in school. I had a fight with some kid, whatever. I got in the car. My mum asked me a question. I said, mum, I don't want to talk now. She yeah, slapped me so hard. My nose was pouring out with blood. I said, Mum, I need a tissue. She goes, Hold, use your fucking hand. Yeah, but that is what teaches you discipline. Nowadays, you've got the kids right. saying to their parents, Mum, do this. Right. You well, that's good? why, because they've gone the whole school in with no discipline. The whole parenting has now gone with no discipline in there. They can't actually go, fuck, if your dad did actually go, would you do? He'd go, nine, nine, three, three, two, one, <laughs> He can't do nothing. And then they get to 17, they're now out on the road looking for work. 
And they're going, how are you going to control them? You can't. Yeah, you can't start. It's too late. You know, you've got to start teaching a puppy as a puppy. You can't let it run wild for 17 years and then go, right, teach that. It's impossible. Right, and I'm afraid it's a, a no-win situation. It's spiralling out of control, this country, I'm afraid. Yes, I'm country. very glad I've lived my little bit and I've come to the end. This, this country is. Your end's not there yet. Slow it down. Don't be saying things like that just Well, yet. I'm happy, dying, and Now I've met you, the biggest <laughs> <of> my superstar. <laughs> let me I, tell you, if, if this place tastes like it looks... You've tasted it. Tell me. Oh, it's beautiful. Listen, I'm, 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 I thought it was sexual food. <laughs> it titillated me. Yeah. You've really you, you love all that shit, don't you? You're, you're a bit, Ellie like said, on a more serious note now. Yeah, yeah. You spoke earlier on about your son, yeah, murdered. Yeah. Talk to me. What, what, when um, did that my, happen? My son was shot at uh, point blank range, dead, eight, nine years ago. And was that? And they found the culprit, and um, and he's in prison now, doing thirty years. Was that that due to him he, being your son? He had gone on to the. He, had, he he wasn't an angel, my little boy. He wasn't. That was due to that him was, being part. Due to one of my six children going down the path that I choose. Yeah, narcotics was were not my chosen path. Crime, as a, as a young man, was mine. You got twenty criminals when I was twenty. You would have had a bank robber, an hijacker, a safe cracker. Or whatever. You get twenty criminals now. It's all narcotics related. Well, that weren't my gang of. Crime, you know what I mean? I'm, af I'm afraid my son um, got a little bit involved in that and he's not here. And do you still have people cause you issues because of who you are today? Do I still have people? Causing you issues because of who you are today? Um, not to my face, but that I'll, I'll get a lot of people causing issues for me today. You know, not, not to my face. But since the invention of computer, I'll get a few death threats every single solitary week. I'll get all this. I got one from Botswana, David Boy, yesterday. I don't even know anyone, just calling me a fat bastard. I'm a grass and a wanker. Uh, you know, like, I, I don't. My front door's open, my front gate's open, I have parties at my house. I ain't got no trouble with people in real life. But you get the odd one or two that once they meet Dave Courtney, I'm not six foot six, I'm not 23 stone, I am 65. I'm, and they go, well, I'll do it. That's it. But you got a good phone. You got yeah. a good phone book, though. I got a scary phone. Book. Yeah, you got a good, good phone. That's the cockiest thing I've ever seen. Anyway. That's the <laughs> cockiest thing. Listen, I said now, if I was in any bit of trouble in the world, in any country, I think, especially this country, with whoever, whoever, if you let me get to my phone, I will fuck you. Yeah? If you let me get to my phone, that'd be the, and that's all I am, mate. Not the best fighter. Not me. I got a scary phone book. Yeah. Yeah. That's all you. That and is that's all, you all really these need. plasterers, no plasterers. Footballers got footballers phone books. I was a criminal. I got figure here that would do any. And you've got a respected name as well. So yeah. you got you got people out I, there. I proudly who... carried that um, the yellow pages of the underworld and monarch. I'm, I'm, I proudly hold them up. If the rest of the world are looking at me as the typical English gangster, I'll take that job on board very very seriously and show the world. Well, I'm supposed to be, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm romantic and stupid like that. Your house, you've told me a little bit about this house of yours. My house, yeah, it's it, a castle. Sir. Your castle, it was so a, my, it was an my apologies, school. castle. And um, I've, I've literally built it into, into, a, into a castle. It's called Camelot, all the flags and the... And what you, got, what you got in the garden? In the garden, we've got a big sword in the stone. We've got, we've got a bar, we've got a 16-seater jacuzzi. We have a massive big sit down under undercover 20 barbecue Fuck me. Um, a bull riding thing which is a new washington and a nightclub that holds 300 people a three-story 50 shades of gray dungeon which they make the films and the and the magazine things and all that you know do the ann summers catwalk well they did they do all of that there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. when can i pop round? Yeah. As soon as you can <laughs> fit into a bash. Ne ne next as party. As soon as you look good in a bash. Ne next party, make sure I get an invite to that. I yeah. look forward to come to it. But now listen, Dave, what I have got to say is I could sit here and ask you for hundreds of your stories. Yeah? yeah. You've got more stories than any man I've had on here. And to you, it's normal. You can't yeah. sit here and tell me, Mikey, this is the most important story. This is the craziest story. I know, story. it's hard for this me is to that do that. Story because who is your hero? Because oh. you don't give a shit about any of it. Yeah. You've done it now. It's done. I've Just met them tick all. that box. Yeah. It's done. All. And it's all I can say to you is, one thing I will say is, you're the most unserious, serious man I've ever met. 
you're such a chilled, laid back, happy guy, but probably you've got the strongest phone book I've ever I'll set up. Carry this, listen, I'll carry this, whatever this is, into whatever walk of life I'm in. So if I'm in the naughty boy world and I'm in a room full of naughty people, this is the one you get. Yeah, mm. all too busy doing the eyebrow thing, <laughs> and I'll remember, this is the one you get. And this normally is the one that mends things. Yeah, we can all do that and do a thing. Yeah, but this is the one that's important, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that is that is. I give you the respect for that because when I, I interview a lot of ex-criminals, criminals, yeah. gangsters, wannabe gangsters, yeah. the whole lot, and they all sit opposite me and put on a persona. They try and be the hard nut. They try and intimidate you when they're telling a story. I've done this, yeah, I've done that. You sit here smiling going, yeah, I fucking caved his face in, jumped through, it was the wrong guy. Like, you to you, it's it's funny. And I think it's so good that you can still, because there must be, you've gone through well, shit as well. It's just work for someone like myself that does that for a living. And the only way I can explain that is, if a, a, a bricklayer don't come home with his trowel, all day long, sit in the front room of it and start building <laughs> brick walls in the kitchen in the front. And I don't run around the kitchen with a gun saying to my missus, make me chit chat. It's tools of the trade, on site, at work. And when you go home and shut the front door, it's just a bloke. And the one with the tits is in charge. She's in charge. But you just, I don't matter what uniform you got on, copper, sergeant, major, prison officer, judge. When you go home, they're in charge, aren't they? End of. I'm one of them. I'm I'm impact. Impact. I I didn't actually think that's how you'd be. I was going to go into a battered gangster's home. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. All I will say is, listen. It's a pleasure having you on the show. That's been nice, man. Really. I don't. I, you have allowed me just to rabbit about normal things. But that's what I want. I and don't I think you've I, got something a little bit different than most of the others. All your other podcasts. I said when I was coming up here, I don't want to know who you've done this to, who you've done that to, because it's all out there. Go and watch it. You want to see it? It's, it's a really funny there. story, haven't it? It's Go got on. nothing to do with anything, but someone just it reminded me of it on the way here. I was doing a boxing show in Streatham, and I have a bit to do with the BKB, which is at yeah, the yeah. Uh, Bare Knuckle Boxing at the um, O2. That's a fantastic night out. They've just done the Charles Bronson belt, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Last weekend. fantastic. But um, just being a slippery bastard, I had a pair of gloves and I got a magic marker, and I wrote Nigel Benz. Yeah, yeah. Signature on the glove, and I'm up there doing the auction afterwards. <laughs> and I'm selling Nigel Ben's gloves, and I've got a two and a half. I've got a two and a half for it. Chigwell made me remember this. The geezer who bought it lived in Chigwell. That's what made me bring this story up. It's a few years ago. Anyway, so he went, uh, You know Nigel? And yeah, yeah. Good friend of mine, but there's all pictures of me and Nigel. So he bought them for 200 and something quid it was. And then afterwards, was all the people that were there sitting there signing uh, yeah, yeah. fucking programmes. And he's queuing up and I thought, I guess you must want to sign a programme. And he went, I don't know, I don't know. He went, do you still see Nigel now? I went, yeah, I do. He said, would you tell him that there's two ends in Ben? The two ends. Oh, you fucking in Ben. I spelt, <laughs> I spelt his fucking name. <laughs> so I straight, listen, what I've done straight away is I can't argue that point. I actually went from there, there's the 200. Keep that glove. I said, because that's a really funny story for you to keep, mate. Yeah, yeah. So there's your money back. No one's earned nothing, but keep the glove. That's a funny story, isn't it? You're going to two ends in bed. That is, had, how'd you get that one wrong? I don't know. I'm a div, aren't I? <laughs> I'm actually a div. But. but listen, honestly, thank you for coming on. Pleasure, Pleasure. having you on the show. I will throw you a few interesting characters that would be good for this. I'll do that for you. Yeah? Wicked, nice appreciate it. You, a pleasure to see you soon. Pleasure to see you, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. Don't forget me when you have one of them parties in the nightclub. Yeah, you. Make sure.